folks. Welcome to Set Apart Homestead. This is Travis here at the Prepared Homestead. Well, two states so far, <clears throat> excuse me, have declared a state of emergency. New York, and just moments ago before making this video, I read that the state of Massachusetts has also declared a state of emergency. They've had a <clears throat> increasing jump in testing of uh, positive tests on cases, and so they have also declared it. There are National Guard troops on the ground in New York uh, actively helping out in the situation. Uh, from what I read that they are uh, decontaminating areas and helping, you know, lock areas down, uh, schools, things like that. Uh, so <clears throat> we are starting to see this thing progress here in the United States, at least in some pockets. Our federal level government seems to still be lingering behind and the leadership apparently believes that this is just going to miraculously vanish uh, and that is almost a direct quote <clears throat> so what does that mean sorry my throat today is no i don't have the coronavirus <laughs> at least i hope not i've not been anywhere uh we've been trying to restrict our movement uh, in the public so and we've got plenty of stuff to hunker down when we need to but uh, it's it's allergies I get them every year so don't worry <laughs> at least I hope anyways um, things are continually looking serious now we're not seeing massive jumps in confirmed cases every day although we are seeing, on average, around 150 or more a day in confirmed cases, it seems, in the last few days. But if you do a little digging, which I have done this morning online, and I can, of course, find every state, but I have seen where multiple states have released <clears throat> the amount of cases that they have tested total. The amount of tests, not in one day, but total that they have run. And some of these states have tested less than 50 people and some of them less than 40 people. Uh, it, I believe it was just a couple of days ago that I read a report that the entire state of Washington, which is where the biggest outbreak is going on, had only tested 35 cases in one day. And yet there are numerous reports all in the news and online of hospitals reporting in from all over stating that they are being starting to fill up that they are running out of beds hospitals in Seattle are reporting that they're having to have people literally set out in the hallways and on beds in the hallways because they are so overwhelmed with patients and it doesn't mean that all of those people have it but it seems kind of strange that there's this dr drastic influx of ill people coming in when we know that there's a virus among us and they're still not doing a lot of testing and so that's why we're not seeing this big numbers jump all of us you know overnight but we are seeing them increase and at some point I, my gut tells me that at least some of these state and county governments are going to start feeling the pressure uh, from their constituents to do more and more testing I know that there's still this, this line that's being said over and over again here in the United States that it's not that big a deal, that it's, you know, the numbers aren't that bad, that the, you know, that probably in the end we'll see that the mortality rate's not too terrible and maybe it's a little worse than the flu and, and on and on. But here's where I stand on this. We are now in well over 100 countries on this planet. And several of those countries are having very large outbreaks going on. In the beginning, it was China. And of course, we all know, being a communist country and the way that they spew so much disinformation and propaganda, it was really hard to determine what was true and what was not. The Chinese officially was saying one thing, and there were dozens, if not hundreds, of reports from individuals and reporters coming out of China that was saying something vastly different, and that there's people that are still saying things are way different than what the Chinese are reporting. So, you know, my gut and my feeling is that you can't look at what the Chinese said with any type of, you know, validity. 
but now we're in other countries that are typically a little bit more honest than the Chinese. And so let's look at them. Um, I was reading an article today out of Italy of, of a doctor in the, the heart of the outbreak there in the northern province of Italy. And he was saying that, you know, the reason why it was such a big deal uh, that that it that it's become such a big deal over there is because in the beginning they were just saying it's just like the flu it's not a big deal not to worry about it and now all of a sudden it is exploding and the hospitals are filled overflowing and that it is serious that it is worse than the flu and that people need he was pleading and begging people please take this serious this is much worse than the flu and this is something we need to take serious um, that is extremely contagious and and very you know it's it's a very serious disease. Uh, look at things coming out of Iran, and of course they're not obviously reporting accurate answers. I don't believe or accurate numbers. I don't believe them for a minute. Even their their official numbers are high, uh, but they you know they're contradictory themselves. You know you've got the official number at one level, and then you've got the deputy health minister reporting a much higher number, extremely higher number. Uh, and then you've got governors of different provinces saying that, well, we've had more deaths just in our province than what they're saying the whole country's had. So there's a lot of, <clears throat> around the world, a lot of nations are really trying to politicize this and and keep the, the truth down. And, and whenever a nation, and our country seems to be the worst, just about. I mean, we're way up there for certain. We're, we're in the top three, at least and maybe number one. Uh, and you have to ask yourself, whenever you start seeing things happen, and even if you don't know 100% for certain, if it just has at least the appearance and there's enough little evidence coming out to make you believe that your government is telling you a lie or hiding the truth from you, then you must ask yourself, then why? Why are they doing it? What does it benefit them to you know, keep the truth from us? <clears throat> it benefits them by you not panicking. It benefits them by keeping the markets up as much as possible for as long as possible. It benefits them by <clears throat> not uh, going to the voting booth and, and voting for them. Uh, it, you know, th all these things, they, they, they want to keep, um, keep you complacent. Now, at some point, I suspect their game plan will be and this is, this is almost an opposite to what I just said, but if you think about it, I think it all fits. I think their plan is, is to keep everyone as calm as they can right now until it gets really bad. And then once it, the reality hits that it's really bad, then it will explode, you know, or potentially could, and people could really panic to the point that they would have to declare a national emergency and possibly even martial law. Uh, I'm not saying that that's exactly what I think's going on, but it would not surprise me if that is the motive because I'm having a hard time believing that our leadership in this country is really as incompetent as they appear to be with the things that they are doing. And there is definitely some things that have been very incompetent. Uh, and I, I know there's going to be those that just, you know, believe the president face value and what he says and doesn't even try to see if, you know, if there's anything, you know, a little bit off. But, you know, he keeps saying that the border was closed. The border was never closed. They've restricted movement from certain areas in China into the United States. That's really it. There were a lot of other measures that could have been done to really stop this in the beginning or greatly slow it down. <clears throat> you know, I think we're actually in a worse, worse situation than China. And let's just take China's numbers, official numbers, and believe those for a moment. Because in China, it started in one city. <clears throat> and they quickly moved in and they shut that region down. And they shut it down hard. I mean, they locked them down in some hard quarantine. And so it minimized the spread of it. Even though it did spread, it minimized the spread into other parts of the country. Whereas here in the United States... We have it in multiple cities on every coast, in the middle of the United States, everywhere. And the last count that I saw that was in 36 states, and it's probably much more, you know, probably been a few more added by the time you watch this video. 
So it's everywhere, and there's absolutely no containment whatsoever, whatsoever, other than now we're seeing some containment in New York and Massachusetts. They're trying a few things out west, but not really a lot. So there's not really a lot of containment. So it's everywhere instead of just one place, and there's no containment whatsoever. They're not even testing to even know where it's at, at least not that much. So it's going to explode and it's gonna explode fast. Um, <clears throat> I was reading that the Chinese at the height of the outbreak over there, they were testing over 100,000 people a day. And I don't even think we're at hitting 1,000 people a day yet nationwide, maybe. But I don't even think that, including all the, the local health departments and local labs, it's just not looking like it from all the numbers that I'm seeing. So <clears throat> I don't think that it's, I think it, there's a potential for it to be a lot worse here. Now, I know a lot of people are saying that, hey, it's only really affecting the elderly. You know, the, the rest of the people only have mild conditions. Well, number one, let me address this. You know, I, I'm a believer of the book and the book tells me that we're supposed to take care of the less fortunate and the widows and elderly and things like that. So to just discount the elderly is pretty sad. You know, if this thing blew up into a truly apocalyptic SHTF globally, those elderly people are gonna be the ones that you need to, to learn from, at least a lot of people will. So those elderly people are the ones that actually know how to live. Uh, for the most part, they know how to live on much less. They know how to go out and garden. They know how to do these things, whereas these younger, the younger generations, they don't. There's people in my generation, like myself, that has taken it upon ourselves to learn. Uh, maybe we grew up in a more rural lifestyle like I did. But for the most part, even my generation doesn't even know how to live that lifestyle. And so the people that are dying off is that generation. And they're just as valuable to this society as I am or someone that's half my age. So to just say that it's not a big deal because it's only killing off old people, that's cruel and harsh. Second point I want to make. Everyone keeps saying that the symptoms are mild. The symptoms are mild. Even our own government is saying that. Do you know where they've come up with that? They got that from China because China categorized everyone um, that was getting it into three categories, mild symptoms, moderate, and severe. With the World Health Organization, they defined what China meant by those three definitions. Mild symptoms in China, when they were establishing kind of the protocol standards for this, was up to and including severe acute pneumonia that did not require hospitalization. And it said that the majority of that, they said 80, around 80% 80 of the people that became infected um, were in the mild condition category. And the majority of those cases did develop acute pneumonia. Now friends, if you've ever had pneumonia, and I have, acute pneumonia is pretty serious. Even if you don't have to go to the hospital, it will knock you down for a few days, maybe even a couple of weeks. And some people, it takes them a few months to really fully to recover from it. So if 80% of the people that get this have that, think of the, the, the toll on our workforce of a lot of people not being able to go to work. They may not have to go to the hospital, but they can't go to work for a few days or maybe a week or two because of it. That's mild conditions. Moderate is pneumonia that requires hospitalization. You require you know, oxygen, some treatment because you're having a lot of difficulty breathing. Then the acute ones, are around somewhere between 5 and 10 percent and those are people that have respiratory failure acute respiratory failure and or organ failure and many of those are the ones that ended up dying because officially the number is and you can do the math is around 3.4 percent mortality uh, average some places higher some places lower but the average is 3.4 percent so folks, that's a lot of sick people. And if you look at a nation with about 330 million people and the, the infection rate on this is 60 to 70% and 80% of those people uh, are gonna get acute pneumonia, 20% of that 70% infected is gonna need to be in the hospital. That's several million people. So you've got 16 million people that are gonna need hospitalization. Well, guess what? There's only 925,000 beds in the entire country. And they're not just sitting empty. 
the majority of the time, there are already people in those hospital beds for other reasons. And now you're gonna dump another 16 million of them on top of that. And the hospital, average hospital stay in China was three to four weeks. So you can start to kind of see how the medical system can be overwhelmed very rapidly. And the way this thing has happened in other countries, it didn't just infect over a period of multiple months. It's not been around that long. So you're gonna see 16 million people potentially, or at least several million people within a short period of time of maybe just two or three months, all going to the hospital, needing hospitalization, needing treatment, needing to use medical supplies that are gonna be in limited supply because of the influx of people, and because that there's this pandemic everywhere, most of our medical supplies of that nature come from imported out, outside of this country, countries that are also dealing with this epidemic that's not exporting because they don't have the labor to manufacture and because they need it for their own people. So you can start to see where this thing could explode into something much more severe. I'm not saying that I think it's the end of America or the end of human humanity or anything like that. I'm saying that the way this is looking, a lot of the experts, and if you look at other countries that are dealing with it, many other countries are on full lockdown. Italy is on full lockdown. Uh, several other countries are locking things down fast. Israel is not allowing anyone into the country anymore, and they are announced today that they're kicking out all tourists and they're closing all borders. Uh, several other countries are working on coming up with some kind of plan like that. Australia is one of those also. Um, look at the other countries that are dealing with this, and they're taking a lot more serious than we are because they're dealing with it, have dealt with it longer, and they know what this thing can do. So this isn't just a Democrat ploy or some kind of political thing here in America. Look at other countries in the rest of the world. And don't just go by what the mass media is saying. Get online and dig around, I assure you. Uh, there is plenty of footage out there, I've seen it for myself, to show what really is going on. Uh, and so I implore you that if you aren't ready to get yourselves ready and to start talking to people that you know and you trust, not everyone's going to listen to you, but you know what? More and more people are listening to you. Start being careful where you go. If you are capable of starting locking yourself down on your property in your home, I would suggest you start doing that. At least at the very minimum, limit the amount of contact you have with the outside world. Uh, limit where you go. Uh, if you're able to work from home, certainly do that. If your kids are still in school, I would recommend considering pulling them out. Um, I think that this thing has the strong potential of causing a lot of havoc for us for a while. And when that happens, there's going to be a ripple effect. You know that. That's how it always works. Financial markets are going to be affected. Political systems are going to be affected. A lot of things. And here's the thing that bugs me with a lot of these preppers to right now going through this. For years, the prepping community, the kind of conspiracy community, the people that are woke, They've been saying, hey, you know, the financial bubble is about to burst, that it wouldn't take much, that it would only take one little thing to cause it to just come tumbling down, that we're on the verge, that there, it's, a, it's a perfect storm. I've heard all these things, that everything is just ripe for something big to happen. Well, guess what? Something is happening right now before our eyes that has every potential possible to wreak havoc all across the board of our systems. And so many people, including preppers, including the people that are considered to be kind of awake about things, are asleep on this one because they've just bought the line, like always, that ah, it's just the government, it's just the media, it's just what... Well, guess what? The government's downplaying it. The media is all over the place on it. You never know whether they're supporting it or downplaying it. But start looking at what's going on in other countries. Not everyone can be spewing fake news all over the world. Start seeing what the doctors and the nurses are saying in the places that this is actually outbreaking. 
Start looking at the, the reports from individuals. You can find them on Twitter, Facebook, it's a little hard because they're really restricting it. YouTube, once in a while, it's a really hard. But there are other places out there. If you don't know, message me or send me an email. I'll shoot you some links of places that you can go that it's a little bit more, you know, a little easier to share that kind of stuff. And you can see video footage and read reports of people from all over the world that's dealing with it right now. And you will see a completely different story from what our administration and our government and what the news media is telling you. So folks, uh, buckle up because the next six to 12 months could be a rough ride on this one. I don't think it's gonna end everything. Could be wrong on that, it may be even worse. Uh, and if it's not as bad, then thank goodness for that. But as preppers, we have an obligation to ourselves and our family to get ready as best as we can and to be ready, stay ready, uh, for the things that face us. And right now we are facing something that has every potential to wreak a lot of havoc and, and be a nightmare for a lot of people. So I encourage you to uh, keep on your toes, keep prayed up, and get your family ready. All right, I'll catch you in the next video.